Today's video is Core Practical 5, the second of the core practicals in the materials topic. The goal here is to determine the Young modulus of a material, and if you look back at my video on stress and strain, you'll see I show you how to calculate the Young modulus, but we're going to have a look at it again obviously here because you need to do it for this practical. Okay, this is the setup that you need to have. Let's talk about safety first. You have to wear goggles because the wire could snap, so make sure that you can say that in any practical question. The second thing you have to do, of course, is to watch your feet because our masses over here, these could fall when the wire snaps and you keep your feet out from underneath there. It's also better to use a catch mat at the bottom here so that you don't break your equipment if it does fall. Some things you need to do to ensure as much accuracy as you can in your experiment is to use a, the longest wire possible. So try and do it the length of a bench because with a very long wire you're going to get a measurable extension. If you try and do this with a short wire, the extension is going to be less than is measurable with a meter rule, and obviously we have to use a meter rule here. And a greater extension means you're going to reduce your percentage uncertainty if it comes to that. The next thing you have to do is use a micrometer screw gauge to measure the diameter of the wire here. And the best practice with this is to measure the diameter of five, at five points along your wire and then turn your micrometer each time so you're measuring from a different orientation, just in case one edge of your wire is slightly flat. And that way you're going to have five readings from which you can take an average and therefore have a better level of accuracy in the diameter of your wire. Okay, so we set it up like this and between these two wooden blocks down here, you clamp your wire so that it's held securely with the G-clamp. And it depends on your setup here. If the zero of your meter rule is right down there against the blocks, then you can use just one marker. And your marker is just a little piece of sellotape or a little piece of post-it note folded over. And so that you're measuring right there, you know what your initial value for your marker is. This is to help you do the extension. If you can't set it up so the zero of your meter rule is down here, then you need to use two markers and you're measuring the distance like in the diagram here between the two markers. That is going to give you a bigger percentage uncertainty because you'll have the resolution of your meter rule at both ends. So it doubles your uncertainty. And because you're going to subtract those, you're going to have that doubled uncertainty over a smaller value, which is going to give you a bigger percentage. The next thing you have to do is to measure the length to your marker without any tension in the wire. So you can just hold it over your pulley here and measure the length to your marker. Now do try to have your marker as far along this as possible, considering that you're probably going to get a maximum of maybe 15 millimeters extension. So you have it as far along as possible, allowing for 15 or maybe 20 millimeters from the end so that the wire can extend. And then all you do is add masses on here. And each time you add a mass, you measure the distance that your marker has moved from its initial position. Now, when you make your table, you're obviously going to add the masses in kilograms. You also need to add the new length. And this is very important when you're constructing a table. You must put in all the measurements that you make. You can then produce columns for the calculations that you do, but all your raw data has to be in a table. And watch out for this when they ask you about faults that people have made in producing their tables. If they just put extension in their table, then that is incorrect. They need to have the new length of the wire and the extension is then calculated. So you repeat for different masses and you keep finding what your new length of the marker is so that you can calculate extension. Do be careful though, you will find that as your masses go higher up, you start to get what's called creep in the wire. You get very large extensions. Once that happens, you know you've gone beyond the elastic limit and there's no data after that that is going to be useful to you. So go up in 100 grams, measure your extensions, you should see that they're proportional because obviously we're expecting a straight line through the origin here. Once they start to go beyond the proportional level, you know it's time to stop. You should get a table of data that looks something like this. You can see the average diameter of the wire is put in there. Strictly, I should have the five numbers so that that can be checked by anyone looking at the data. That was just going to make my table awkward for this purpose. It will be or should be in for you. I've put my original length of the wire there and you can see it's 3.1 meters and I've done an area calculation over here so that that's just there to be used later on. And you can see this is my raw data. 
the mass in kilograms and the new length in meters, and from that I've calculated the extension, the force added, which is just the mass in kilograms times 9.81, and I've done stress and strain. Stress is force over area, so that's just a calculation of each value of force divided by that number of area, and strain then is extension over original length, so each of these extensions on this column divided by 3.1. To find the Young modulus, and actually that's stress in pascals and not in gigapascals, to find the Young modulus, then you put stress on the y-axis and strain on the x-axis, and you should get a graph that looks something like this. Now you could put these in powers of 10, I've left them the way they are so that we can see it, and the gradient is directly given at this point. And I've just set Excel to show me the gradient in scientific notation, 3.73 times 10 to the 9 Pascal. So that means that our Young modulus here is exactly that. What Edexcel suggests you do in their version of this experiment is that you don't plus stress against strain. So I've shown you this here, so the easy version, you can do that. They're suggesting that you plot the mass added against the extension. And then they want you to work out the Young modulus based upon that. So let's have a look at that because that is playing with the equation for Young modulus a little bit. That's what you, they want you to do. Or of course you could get a question where that's mass against extension and you need to be able to know how to do this. Now let's remember that the Young modulus is the stress divided by the strain. And stress is force over area, and strain is extension over original length. Force, of course, is mass in kilograms times g, so we have mg over area divided by delta x over x. And if you tidy that up a little bit, you get your Young modulus is mgx over delta x times a. Now what Ed Excel are saying is that you plot mass against extension. And that means that your gradient is going to be equal to mass over extension. Which means that we have to multiply our gradient by g times x over area in order to find the Young modulus. So we can see here that this is our gradient 3.597. And so if we put those numbers in, 3.597 multiplied by 9.81, multiplied by 3.1, which was our original length, and then divide that by the area, which we put in our spreadsheet, 2.93 times 10 to the minus 8. And that, of course, gives you a Young modulus of 3.73, as expected, times 10 to the 9 pascals. Exactly the same as we got from the stress and strain graph.